use it to, to really get your work out there. Like having it downloaded thousands of times in pretty much every country in the world, like that's a pretty amazing feeling. All right, we are back once again on the Pencil Kings podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Bowler. Pencilkings.com, of course, is our website where we're helping beginner artists become better artists and find that community that you've been looking for. And today we've got Chandler Bolt on the line. He's basically helping people publish books. There's so many people inside Pencil Kings that have written to me and say, Mitch, I really want to make a children's book. Children's books are a little bit different than a written book. There's a ton of similarities, and a lot of them have to do with the mindset that you have approaching how you're going to create this book. So, welcome to the call, Chandler. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Mitch. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no problem. So, why don't you tell people just a little bit about what you've been doing the last year or, or two years of you know, self-publishing books? What, what is that all about? Like probably a lot of your listeners out there, I, I kind of thought about maybe writing a book, but I just never thought I'd do it, you know? To be honest, like I, when I first started, I kind of was a horrible writer, but I was like, oh, I will never write a book. But then I just kind of stumbled into it and saw how easy it was um, and, and how much fun it was and just all the benefits from it, really. And so that's when I kind of got into it and, and started putting books out. But I love what you were saying about the children's book aspect, because like, we run a program that teaches people how to do it. And one of our students did a children's book. So we can probably hint on that or oh, awesome. all that, you know, pull some lessons from that throughout the podcast. Sweet. So can you tell people a little bit about how many times your books have been read or downloaded and sort of like where you sit in the Amazon space? To me, it seems pretty unbelievable. When I met you and you said, dude, I've got this book. It's number, I think it was number one or number two in productivity, if, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that was that was in time management. And that's when we, that was the first book I ever did. And we uh, knocked off David Allen, getting things done on as number one in the charts. We got 5,200 something downloads in the first three and a half days of, of the book. And then it continued to sell um, just like crazy. And that's when I, my eyes were kind of opened to the passive income opportunity, um, to all these different things that, that exist within Amazon um, and, and by putting a book out. And then you know, this is my fourth book, I think, and just just released that earlier this week um, when this podcast is being recorded. But even that book, um, we just hit number one in all of entrepreneurship, which is this is the most successful book launch we've done to date. So really excited about that. But I mean, the books have been downloaded tens of thousands of times. We raised a bunch of money for charity. Um, we've made a bunch of money for ourselves and passive income and all that good stuff. And more, most importantly, getting our message out there to as many people as possible. Before we get into sort of some of the mindset issues, because I think that's what's going to be most beneficial to the listeners here. I don't know if people really realize what kind of a publishing revolution that we're really in right now. Like we don't realize how big it is and why it's so big. Uh, I mean, I have my own theories, but you've obviously dug a lot deeper into this. Can you explain to people like what kind of opportunity we're sitting on here right now? Because there's always new opportunities coming, but this one feels like a really big one. And I think it will be around in two years. I think it will be around in 10 years, but I can't really say for sure. And my feeling is that what's happening right now is that there's a lot of people jumping on this opportunity who are not putting out quality content. You're obviously putting out great content. There's a lot of people putting out not so good quality content and that there's going to be like a clamping down, just like, you know, Google had clamped down on, on spammy websites at yeah. some point. And to the end user, you don't realize this, but if you're somebody that wants to start putting out books or children's books, like you have to be aware that this window is, is right now pretty much wide open, but it's not going to be as wide open as time goes on. Oh, for sure. I mean, we, we've kind of reached the bubble point of this whole revolution, but I mean, there's still a ton of opportunity out there, right? And the the biggest thing, I think, this opportunity for artists who have maybe always created stuff or had stuff that they sold on their own sites or, you know, maybe they just wanted to create stuff. Like, that's where the real opportunity is, I think, is that you can take that stuff that you already have or that you're creating and you can just, with a couple clicks of a button tap into an audience of billions of people on their smartphones, on their tablets, on their Kindles, all that stuff. And you can tap into that customer source and, and use it to, to really get your work out there. Like having it downloaded thousands of times in pretty much every country in the world, like that's a pretty amazing feeling. Would you say it's like having some, your product being stocked in Walmart or is it bigger than that? It feels bigger than that because Walmart seems like something that's right down the street. You know, and I, I know there's like, there's not Walmarts in India. I, at least I don't think there is, right? But you know, like all these random countries that like my book is sold, the, my books are sold in, 
like there's not even a Walmart there, right? So like it, it right. feels like this this thing where I can just envision someone in India or in Brazil or in all these random countries um, that the book sells in, and I can just picture them in whatever r- crazy environment that's way different from mine, like being on some sort of internet connected device downloading my book, and and that's just like a c- pretty cool thing to envision. Nice. So here's a couple of things that just popped into my head that you might be able to produce a book with if you're an artist. So I, when I go to Comic Cons, I see a lot of artists, they have their sketchbooks. So I imagine you could get high resolution scans and compile that into a book and sell it on Amazon, correct? Mm-hmm. Totally. You could do tutorials. So if you have some, say you're like a, an airbrush artist and you wanted to write how to get started with airbrushing or run an airbrushing business, you could write that kind of book, correct? Yep. You got children's books. We already talked about that. Mm-hmm. What else could you do as an artist? As an artist, you could do like, I've been talking to some podcasters and, you know, podcasting is their art and they do like how to podcast or how to record audio books or how to do stuff like that. You know, they, they will write books like that. And then sometimes use those to funnel leads directly into their, their services. While you're saying that, I thought of a couple more. If you're an art teacher, you could compile all of your notes and give those to your students. And, and instead of like having to go through a publisher, just send them them to Amazon. You still get paid. It's, it's perfect. So let's let's go through some of the mindset issues here because I think this is a big win. Um, people don't know where to get started when they want to write a book, when, especially, I, I don't know why it is, but I get a lot of requests for children's books. And it feels like to me that there's the idea, there's the desire, there's the want to create the book, but that next step is completely unknown. It's like everyone's aware that there's a door there, but the door is invisible. They don't know how to even find the handle to open that door and see what's on the other side. Yeah, totally. That's, you know, I think that's something that everybody can relate to. It's if you think about writing a book or maybe you haven't even thought about it is the sense of like, I maybe want to do that, but I'm not a good writer. I'm not an expert. I don't have anything to write about. I don't have the time to write a book. I've never enjoyed writing, <laughs> you know, like all these things that came up for me when I thought about writing my first book and that come up for, for really anyone, you know, it's a matter of, of dealing with those things and, and kind of directing those head on. And hopefully we can just dis- dispel some of those myths because really they, that's what they are is, is myths. You know, books are just collections of stories. So you don't have to be a great writer. You don't have to be a, an expert, any of that to, to write a good book. Um, Because chances are you already have the stories and you already have the knowledge and everything that would be included in that book. And so then what what is the first step? Let's just start there. I have an idea for this children's book and I know that I like parrots. So my children's book is going to be about parrots who help um, deliver messages to people because there's no cell phones in this world of parrots and low technology. Where do I start? Um, so we, we like to teach this, uh, this three-step mind map process or this three-step like book writing process. And it, it might be a little bit different for uh, children's books, but let's, I think we can go through it and uh, kind of see how it helps. It, it, it all starts with a mind map. That's the first step. So if you're talking about this children's parrot book, I'd write that idea about a children's parrot book in the middle of a, a blank sheet of paper. And then I'm going to come out from that and a bunch of different arrows and circles and ideas and just expand, 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 and get, just throw out every story you can think of, every maybe the moral that you would want from the story, the just any, it's just a big brain dump that you can think of out there. And then next, what we'll do is for a traditional book, um, and like I said, this will be a little bit different for a children's book, but as we would take all this, we would start grouping things into sections. So the groups of ideas like you would start grouping those and then start forming your outline. So your flow for the book. And then you're, within those sections, you would start forming actual chapters. And so you start mapping that out. And then the third step of the process is to actually start writing. And the way we do that is by repeating this process over and over chapter by chapter. So for the first chapter, we would spend 10 minutes mind mapping, 10 minutes outlining, uh, and an hour and a half writing or something like that. So that's kind of like the traditional flow. And so we would just repeat that over and over again, chapter by chapter. But I I feel like for a children's book, you could do it very similarly. You know, you have your main idea, you do your mind map, you start to form your outline, which is basically just a story flow. Um, And then you actually start to get into the writing portion. And that's when you can start adding in other things afterwards, like the pictures and, and the, you know, once you have it kind of mapped out. 
Awesome. So I think that's pretty clear. And if you if you've never heard of a mind map before, because when somebody mentioned it to me a few years ago, I was like, "What? What is a mind map?" You've probably done it before in school, or, or someone showed it to you, or you had to do one in work. It, you might just have called it something different. But if you Google mind map and you look at the image search, you'll, you'll it'll just instantly be clear to you. Um, okay, so first step covered. We've got like sort of an outline of you know what what's going to happen with these parrots and their delivering messages and and kind of the stories that will come out of of that. And we've written a simple story, which how long do you recommend people write for a book? Let's say somebody's listening and actually wants to write a real book. I tend to go on the the more concise and to the point side because my personal preference in a book is that it's not full of a bunch of fluff and that it doesn't just beat around the bush, right? Like I like books that get to the point. But that being said, the, the rule is like, you know, as long as people want it to be. So we, we go shorter, but we'll, like when you're thinking about doing a book idea... We recommend like looking in that category and see if you can see one of two things. Either there's a hole in the market, so maybe there's a ton of 300 plus page books and what the market's dying for. Maybe they're books on paleo or something. And there's like all these tell all paleo books. And maybe what the market wants is just a beginner's guide to paleo that can be 50 pages long. And, and you can either go that route of, of, of tapping into the market um, or you can go the other route of taking a look at the books and seeing how long they are and just saying, okay, well, this is, this is how long the, the expected length is. That's kind of what I, would, what I would shoot for. But I tend to go for shorter. Our first book was 14,000 words, uh, give or take, which turns out to be 50 to 60 pages or so. And that was kind of a rule of thumb. But like this most recent book was 32,000 words, so about 170 something pages. So it's it, it's longer. So it just kind of uh, depends by book, but those are some some good guidelines to go by. Awesome. I, I like that a lot. I like, for me, when I'm approaching a task, I like to sort of know how much or, or what the steps are that I have to do. And sort of ruling out any ambiguity really helps me get a clear path of what I have to do. And I think that's a, a big one for people that want to do children's books is that you have an idea that you want to make the book but you haven't actually done any research. And I would really recommend going to a bookstore or a library and looking at the children's section and just seeing what's out there. Because I feel like there's a lot of hurdles that as creative people that we put up that are not necessary at all. For example, you might say, oh, I don't know how to write a children's story. It's like, well, go read something for the ages, you know, two to, th- to five years old and see how much and how complex the writing is. You'll probably be very surprised. Or people think, I can't draw or I can't paint or I can't whatever good enough. Just go and look and see what's out there. And you'll be really surprised at what is out in print right now that people are buying and that's on shelves. And you can probably do as good or in many cases better than, than existing products. Oh, definitely. I have something more. Something none of your dry as dust professors and routine written doctors have. All right, so we've got our story outline. Um, We're not really going to talk about drawing, but if you if you want to get into drawing, and we have courses on that at Pencil Kings, so we'll skip that. Assuming that people can draw. Now, the next thing for me that seems like a big mental hurdle, I've got my story written, I've got my uh, drawings. How do I lay this thing out, or what does that look like in terms of putting it on Amazon? Because I think of, you know, I read a lot of digital books, and I, I guess it's, it's different to have a children's book than a textbook, but how is the format going to look? Is it going to be all jarbled? Is there ways that I can protect against that? What's the process like? It will be a little bit different for a children's book. And actually, Amazon just put out a really awesome resource that's for children's books specifically. Um, and it makes the process a lot easier and it's kind of like a, an editor type thing. Like you can work out of it, um, to build your children's book, which makes that whole process a lot easier. But for most other books, it's, it's as simple as, you know, we, like my first book, we did it in Google docs and then we just handed it over to a designer to put together a PDF, which you don't even have to do that much. Um, but we did without that step though, you can format a word doc or a Google doc and then hand that over to someone um, off of Elance uh, to do the formatting for Kindle. And they'll, they'll format it into a .mobi or .epub file. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, costs about 40 bucks. And then the book will look great and be Kindle ready and Kindle readable. Awesome. So you don't really have to worry about that step. There's people there, 40 bucks ish They should t- be able to take care of it for you. And if you're doing a children's book, Amazon actually has a tool where I, I'm guessing like you can have ultimate control, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. 
And then, so, okay, so now we've got our book. We're doing awesome here. We're, we're 16 minutes in and we've already got our <laughs> book done. Um, Man, we are flying. <laughs> so, okay, so once you have this uh, EPUB or Mobi file or PDF, whatever it is that we're going to upload to Amazon, how difficult is, like, even though I'm fairly technical, because I haven't looked into it, it just seems like, oh, I, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like a, a lot of listeners will probably relate to that, right? Like, I'm not technical. I don't know how to, how to do all that stuff. Luckily, Kindle makes it super, super easy. It's just a streamlined process. So you're going to have to have your cover, and you're going to have to have your .mobi or your EPUB file. Be, excuse me. And beyond that, you basically just set up your KDP account, which is a Kindle Direct Publishing account. And then you go through the exact process. So that's when you put in your title, you put in um, your book description, you know, just basic things like that. You set your pricing, and within a matter of minutes, you can be up and running, and you can have your your book ready and ready to publish. And in fact, what we teach with our students, and this is more of a, a motivation tool to help them get their books done, is that you can actually set your book up for for pre sale before the book is even finished written, like before you've even finished writing the book. So you can actually set it up for pre-sale ahead of time by going through that same exact process, which is pretty neat because you can be selling and pre-selling the book before it's even finished. That's kind of a new feature that Amazon allows you to do. All right, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push you a little bit outside your comfort zone. Let's say I'm a powder, I'm a sideliner. I don't want to do any of that stuff. My life is technical enough already. I don't want to deal with that because that's you know a little bit about how I feel these days. Are there people that can <laughs> help me go through this process and it's actually kind of affordable? Or is it like, no, you just got to bite the bullet and, and sign up for the account and do the, all this stuff yourself? Because, I mean, to you, it's it's simple. But to me, listening and... I just feel like, man, it's it's yet another system that I have to learn, and I'm kind of like, you know, I'm 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 a, being a little bit of a Debbie Downer right now. <laughs> I like that, Mitch. Well, for for that, there's definitely people that will upload your book and everything um, for you. I've talked to people who've done it. I don't have any uh, resources right offhand for most of the stuff we teach. It's like we will give them like a little. We give our students a, a video tutorial, so it's like of me just going through the exact process, you know. And it, it's is literally so easy. It's like the, it's it's like as streamlined as possible. But if you if you still are like, hey, I don't even want to touch that. I don't even want to think about that. Like there definitely are people out there that all you have to do is just give them the deliverables and they will upload it for you. Awesome. I think there's a new service that you can tack on to your offer <laughs> for somebody to just do all this stuff. I, the reason I asked that is because we we had done a book before and, and we did have somebody do that because I that's literally how I felt. And this person like packaged it and did the formatting and got it up. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's nice to know that when you do hit those roadblocks, that there are people... Um, that can help. But sometimes it, it's hard to find those people. That's one of the, the issues that I've come up with. You know, there's people like you that if you're looking to publish a book, Chandler's, you know, has been doing this for a while and is, is really on top of this stuff and continues to stay on top because that's your business. So Yeah, totally. I'm pretty curious about the program that you're offering because I know that for me and for Pencil Kings, there's a lot of emails that I get and I would love to put some of the lessons or the, the, the responses that I've sent to people that can help a lot of artists and I'd love to compile them into a book. So I'm I'm reading your book, which is called, I believe it's called Book Launch, correct? Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for Chandler's book, you can find it on Amazon called Book Launch. And so I'm reading that right now and going through the steps, but I'm curious what you teach people in your course that's not in the book so that people are listening and they're maybe they see the book but they're interested in something more um what that would actually look like and maybe it's a good fit for me i don't know i feel like i'd be too busy right now i'm, I'm still curious to see uh, what you're teaching people and how it's different <laughs> i love it man i love it because I, I love that you said the too busy thing because that's literally um one of the big objections that we get all the time so we, we try to distill it down into like, okay, if you want to do this, we'll take you from book idea to bestseller in three months with only one hour a day. If you can spare one hour a day, you can, you can go through the process. Um, sometimes even less than that, depending on your book. But basically the, the big difference is that book launch, to be honest, that's a lot of my best stuff at a 10,000 foot view, right? So it's a 10,000 foot view of like 
some of the best stuff we teach without getting too technical because uh, we obviously realize that if we get way too technical in a book, people are just going to hate it and be bored out of their mind. <laughs> but so the big difference is that in the course is when I do all the video tutorials, like breakdowns, I should get into the details of all that stuff because for a lot of people, they want to be helped and they want to be shown exactly how to do it. You know, don't, don't leave it up to chance. Um, so that's where that comes in. And also for a lot of people, it's accountability, right? We have an amazing community of people who are going through the exact same process at the exact same time. So you have people right alongside you. You have a dedicated person that you can ask questions to all the time. We have our weekly hangouts. We give you all of our uh, Rolodex of, of people that we use for every step of the process. You know, whether it's a book cover designer, an editor, or you name it, we, we give that to um, some of our students and that helps them to get through the process. So that's kind of like all the nitty gritty detail stuff about actually getting your book finished and, and kind of expediting the process. Awesome. I, I love how you package it together. It's like 90 days bestseller. Is that realistic bestseller? It feels like a pretty big claim. Yeah, it's definitely realistic. That's something that um, we made a bold, bold guarantee on our last program based on the success of our books. But we know this formula and we know the system that we use and, and it really is. And obviously like bestseller, that's a cliche term, right? Like it only means as much as, as you take it for, right? Like a lot of people brag about hitting a bestseller in some really, really obscure category. And that's kind of cheap in the name of bestseller, but like, there, you know, you can definitely reach bestseller status in a serious category. And it's really all about what your strategy is, what you make it, because we realize that, that books are great. Books can be a great source of revenue, but a book is not a business, right? You know, a, a book is just a piece of that business. So for us, the end all be, the end all be all is not the bestseller status as much as, as it is. And most people see when they go through the program, or even if you just, you know, do it yourself and, and, and get a book out there, it's like, all the opportunities on the and all the business that can come on the back end. That's that's where we we really see the power, and that's what this the kind of stuff that I love helping people out with. I'm so glad that you brought that up because that was one other thing that I wanted to talk about very quickly here, or just mention because I know there's a lot of people inside the Pencil Kings community that are uh, they have their own design businesses or they're some kind of graphics artist professional. You can write a book talking about your process or how you look at design differently, and when you're trying to attract clients and like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about using your services. Could you tell me a little bit what it's like to work with you? It's like, sure, I, I can tell you quickly. Here's my, you know, 30 second pitch. And here's the book I wrote on how to, how to do good design for, you know, whatever kind of industry you're in. I can only just imagine how powerful this is. If you just put a, like a physical book in a potential client's hands, how much authority you're going to have when you do something like that. It's, 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 totally. the Trump card. it's the Trump book. It's the new business card, right? Like, you hand people a business card and they throw it away. You hand people a book and they keep it. <laughs> Especially like if you autograph it or something. Oh yeah, I love I love that. You, know, you brought that up in your book about how if you give somebody a, a business card, yeah, it, it just gets tucked away in a wallet or in a drawer somewhere. But a book sits on a shelf and your name is yeah. there and your business or you know whatever you're doing is there visible in one way or another. Uh, so it's it's a lot more powerful. And every time they see that book, they think of you. You know, you were talking about using it to grow your design business or something. Like the easiest book to write is if you're a designer, is the ten things you need to know before hiring your your next designer or whatever, or before hiring your first designer. And you write that book, and then all those ten things are competitive advantages that you offer. So when people read the book, you know they basically see all that, and you are the solution to that problem because you offer all those things. And so it's just you can use that as even just a lead funnel into your business. I love it. All right, we're we got to wrap up here. So where can people go to learn more from you? Um, learn about your program? Yeah, so they can go to self-publishingschool.com. I've got a, a four video training series, a uh, free video training series that I'm doing there, going a lot more in depth on kind of a lot of the stuff uh, we talked about in this podcast. Or they can just shoot me an email at chandler at the com. Awesome. I love that you, uh, you're you willing to give out your email. So if you're interested in books, shoot Chandler a, a message. This is a little bit timely, right? Because our podcast is going to come out and your school, because it's sort of like a big community thing, we do the same thing. For us, we have these 30-day challenges where everyone gets inside and kind of motivates each, each other. So mm -hmm. there's a there's a set date here, right, that 
do we want to be aware of this date or is it something that people can apply to whenever and, and the next time that you open it, they'll still be good? Yes. Yeah, so the, the last day to join this class is the February 22nd. Obviously, our next program comes out in June, and we it's typically we do it every three months. Okay, perfect. Um, so we start a new class. Oh, right. So you'll have every 90 days, you're just like, boom, here's our you know six, success students come out, our, yep. our new bestsellers. Do you want to join them? Who's in for the next challenge? <laughs> nice. Thanks so much. Any any last words or, or anything before we wrap up here? I think we covered it. Thanks for having me, Mitch. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right. Before we wrap up here, I want to give a big shout out to our podcast editor, TJ Eckelberg at Podcast Magic. If you need help with your podcast, um, look him up or shoot me an email at Mitch at and I'll get you in touch. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. And we'll be back next week with another episode of the Pencil Kings podcast. episode of the Pencil Kings podcast and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or everywhere. See you guys soon.